Hello, Norman. Hi, Lisa. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. So what do we know about this son of Omicron? And is that what we're calling it? Well, that's what the tabloid press are calling it, but it's not son of Omicron at all. So I just need to explain a little bit. When um, this new variant emerged, it's taken a while to sort out just how it emerged. And they, they still don't know fully, but they do know there was kind of a mother virus from which this emerged. They don't know whether that, where that came from, called BA, uh, B1.1. Um, now, it gave birth, if you like, to three sub-viruses. Um, BA1, BA2, BA3. BA1 is what we now know as Omicron, which spread through um, South Africa and then across the world, including Australia. BA2 uh, it, it, we, it was recognised a little bit later, but in fact, when they went back and traced their records, it probably emerged around about the same time as BA1. So it's not actually a, sp a spawning from the Omicron, it's a spawning from the mother virus and uh, BA3 emerged then too. So BA2 is really um, like the middle child, if you like, of this family. And uh, like any middle child, it's starting to assert itself. And uh, it's probably a bit more contagious than BA1, which is the Omicron we've known. It doesn't seem to be more dangerous. It may or may not be more or less um, immune evasive. It's just absolutely not clear on that at the moment. Um, but it doesn't look like something we need to worry about. And the good news from other research is that if you've had Omicron, you are well protected against a second Omicron infection. And it looks as though that will cover BA2 as well. I don't like this family, Norman. This family can go well yeah, yeah, away. I, you know, it's Tolstoy saying happy families are all the same, but unhappy families are all different. Indeed. Hey, let's uh, talk about Omicron more broadly. Uh, it's been dubbed a less severe form of COVID, but still, still we're getting often, depending on the day, double digit death tallies in big states like New South Wales and Victoria. Why are deaths continuing to rise? Well, it's the, it's the long tail, unfortunately, of, the, of this outbreak. And Omicron, is, as we've said before, and uh, when we've been talking, is not a mild virus. Mm. It may be milder than Delta, but it's probably no milder than or less severe than the Wuhan virus that originally broke out. And look at the devastation that caused. The reason it feels milder is that we're benefiting from the huge vaccination rates. But we're also suffering from slow booster uptake. And the people who are vaccinated who are dying are often, well, it's, it's unclear just how often, but you know, there is a percentage of those who've, who've died who've not had their booster in time. So it's not a mild virus. Hey, uh, Norman, you've also spoken with an expert who thinks that Omicron may mark the end of the pandemic. And I know we sort of have talked around this before, but what's your feeling now? Well, this is Professor Chris Murray, who's an internationally renowned epidemiologist and modeler and has been very accurate in past predictions. So what he says is that about 50 percent at least of the world's population will be infected with Omicron by the end of March. And that just not, notwithstanding that Omicron gives you actually quite a limited range of immunity, he thinks that it will give you give enough immunity for there to be a lull after Omicron peaks in most countries, which um, and it will have peaked, he thinks, in most countries by um, mid-February. And there will be a lull for a few months um, unless a new variant comes along. So it will go very quiet, is what he predicts. And that when a new variant re-emerges, he thinks there's enough background immunity that it won't look that severe. Um, but it depends on really what that new variant is. Um, so he's, he's thinking that... Um, the Amer and we've got antivirals, we've got potentially new vaccines coming on stream. So it's not the end of COVID-19, it's not the end of danger, but he thinks that we're going to go into a quiescent period. His caveat there is the Southern Hemisphere. He's concerned that we might get a second wave of Omicron in Australia and New Zealand as we go into winter. He thinks the Northern Hemisphere will be okay. But uh, you know, we need good news, and that sounds like good news from somebody who knows what he's talking about. Yeah. All right, Norman Swan, thank you. You're welcome.